This is my video about this. This is a 60 horsepower Suzuki 2014 outboard. It's been sunk. It sat in the water for about six hours. It came out. I don't know what happened to it after it came out. I do know that it seized. It doesn't seem to be covered in salt on the outside, so it does seem like it's had some kind of treatment. A quick look inside the combustion chamber. We can see there's loads of salt water and corrosion in there, so we know it's going to have to come apart. I've already started removing some of the um, bits and pieces, so I've removed the, the electrics from this side, just need to get those away completely now. Taken off the inlet manifold from the other side. It's almost like a cake, it's got lots of different layers. Um, so we're going to go as high as we can. And under here is the oil bath for the timing chain. So I'm just going to drain off the oil now. I don't know whether this has been done already by someone who pulled the engine out. Just removing the rocker cover for the first time. See what we got inside. Okay, that could be worse. What we need to do now is remove the timing chain, timing gear, the, uh, the and the guide, the oil pump, um, and then once we've got that removed, um, then we can remove the head. With these cams, you've got one part of the cam here, which has got a big, big nut on it. So that enables you to hold it still while you're undoing this nut. step is to remove the head now it's very important that the bolts are removed in a certain order for this so I'm going to refer to the manual for that Okay, so I'm just starting to put the cylinder head back together now. Um, I've decided to replace all of the valve stem seals. So these are the ones that came off. Um, I pulled them out just using a set of long nose pliers. Um, it was pretty easy to, to pull them out like that. It did actually, the kit which I bought for replacing the stem seals came with this set of pliers, um, special set for pulling them out. I found that these didn't actually really work. Um, pulled them out using that, but then popping them back in is very straightforward. Um, so you get a new seal like this one, and then we've got a handy little tool here that just slides on like that, and then you simply just pop that down into the valve guide, push down, and that's it. So far, I've lapped in 10 of the valves out of 12. Uh, the other two valves have got some damage on them. So I've ordered some two brand new valves here from Suzuki. I'm gonna lap those two valves in now. 
So I'm just going to apply just a very fine, small amount all the way around. Being careful, of course, not to get any on the uh, anywhere near the stem. So we can see here on the valve that there's a kind of ring around it now. And that's where the valve has made contact with the seat. So some of the tappets that I pulled out of this engine were a bit ropey. This is one of them here. You can see that it's it's got some corrosion around there. So I needed to replace them. There were six tappets that were good, in good condition. So I'm reusing those. Then I looked to get some more from Suzuki, but these tappets are about 30 quid each. So even just six of them, you're looking at 180 quid. So I went on the internet and I found a supplier on Alibaba. So I just looked up the part number, found a supplier in China that makes them exactly to the same specification, ordered them on the Friday, they arrived on the Monday. And these were just $2 each. So I'm just gonna pop a tiny bit of oil. So what I've done here is I've put in some random shims into each tappet. And I've gone for small sizes on the shims, the smallest ones that I've got. The reason I've gone for the smallest size is because the shim is too thick and then I can't get a feeler gauge in there. So now I'm gonna pop the cams in. Um, I'm gonna fit them properly into the journals, bolt them down, then we'll start measuring some clearances. Um, these are marked, uh, so we've got E and we've got I, pretty obvious what that is, we've got inlet and exhaust, and then you'll see on here we've got a little arrow on it as well, and that always just points the direction of the flywheel. Um, and it's also numbered, and that is the position um, from uh, the flywheel. So flywheel is obviously on this side, where the, uh, where the oil filler cap is. This is E3, so this is going to go closest to the timing chain and pointing towards the flywheel. Okay, so we want to measure the clearances when the valve is in the closed position. Just a quick explanation on what I'm doing here. I'm trying to measure the valve clearance and set up the correct shim to go on top of the tappet. The valve clearance is the bit between the bottom of the cam and the top of the shim. And so in this case, I've put a specified shim in there that I know the thickness of. I've then measured the gap. That's given me the total amount between the top of the tappet and the bottom of the cam. Then all I need to do is deduct off the allowable valve clearance for this particular engine, which is 0.22 millimeters. And that gives me the, the shim size that I'm gonna to need to order to pop onto the top of the cam. We've got the parts back from the machine shop now. So we've got the, the bores here, rebored out to a bigger size to accept the bigger pistons. Nice big lots of new parts from Suzuki. So we've got um, some new pistons here, uh, I've got some new uh, main bearings, um, got some bolts, fresh bits and pieces. So the pistons, I've done two of them already, fitted the two new pistons, you can see they're 5-0, plus, plus 5-0 oversize, so these these two are good, good and ready to go back on, um, but I've saved the third one. So this is the new piston, a couple of, couple of notable things on here. Firstly, I've got a, a little dot here, and it says five zero. And then just looking at the, the manual here, that dot is significant because it shows um, which way to uh, attach the connecting rod to it. It also directs which, which way the cylinders go back into the block. Um, yep, so we'll get some oil on these bits and then we'll start putting it together. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna insert this little circuit. I um, don't know if you can see it, but there's a little groove that goes around in there. 
So I'm just going to pop this in and I'm going to do it just using some screwdrivers. Um, the worry is when using a screwdriver to pry things around, of course, there's this very, very sensitive edge here. So I'm going to just try and keep my hand here. So I stab myself instead of the, uh, the side of it if, if anything slips. So the next thing is that I now need to rotate this circuit so that it's in the position shown in the manual. Okay, so I now have the circlip positioned in uh, the position it states in the manual. This is the crucial bit, the writing on the side of the uh, conrod there and then we've got this dot here, they both need to be on the same side. Okay, then we've just got to put a circuit in this side again, and then that is our pistons ready to go back in the engine. So I should probably say at this stage that I've had some problems getting the pistons into the newly uh, bored out block and I started off by using a sort of conventional piston ring compressor and that didn't work so I bought a specialist piston ring compressor this is specific to the size of the piston um, and the bore um, and the concept is is that it's thicker on one end you've got more space on one end than the other so you can put the whole piston and the rings into this put this flush up against the block and then you should be able to just push the piston down into the block this didn't work either, um, and it, it really should have done. So I took the block back to the engineering company that did the bore out, and um, they couldn't get the pistons in either. So what they did was, is that they cut a bit more of a chamfer all the, all the way around the end, and they put the pistons in for me. So I can't show you that on video. So the next bit of the video, the pistons are already in, and I'm gonna start building back up the bottom end. step was to tighten by 65 degrees from where we left off at 15 newton meters. So just clean this up, I've been clean now, but just have the bearings refitted back into it. So there's a set pattern that you have to tighten the head bolts up in and you do these at varying torques starting off with a low torque and working up to a high torque. The first torque setting is 10 Nm so that's what I'm doing here. Now it's 
time to refit the cams, making sure that we use the correct carriers in the right place, as I mentioned earlier in the video. Once these are nipped up, we can then tighten them up to the torque specified in the manual. Extinguishers ready just in case anything were to go wrong. Uh, got some fuel hooked up, got battery hooked up. Anyway, here goes. <laughs> 